Okay, hello everybody, I'm the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be looking at uh, how to make a character sort of transform to squish as he moves to give it some sort of just uh, stylistic, you know, give it the juice, as people say. Uh, here's what it looks like when it's done. As you can see, as the slime character moves around, he transforms uh, up and down, he squishes up and down. He also has a jump, which, you know, doesn't look that great, but. Okay, so this is not so hard. We're doing this through a technique called tweening, which is what we did in the smooth scrolling tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend you go take a look at that. Um, so we go to a new frame. First, we created these backdrop objects, which you need to make sure they're set to obstacles, like we did in the platform movement tutorial. This is going to use the platform movement object. So I'm going to really quickly, without explaining too much, set up the platform movement for our character. We'll just use all the default stuff. We need an object that's gonna be our player. Here he is, we're gonna call it, uh, I don't know, slime. And I have a graphic for him, so I'm gonna pop him in. There it is, boom. All right, and he's huge, so I'm gonna resize him down. There. <clears throat> okay, first things first, we're going to set up the platform movement stuff. So I'm gonna set a new group of events to call this platform movement. Uh, start a frame. I'm going to need to set the object to the slime. And then we need some collision testing. So test for obstacle overlap. Does the object overlap with a backdrop? If so, collision. Object does overlap with an obstacle. <clears throat> um, all right, now we need the movement. So the keyboard repeat while key is pressed right. And that is going to be User is holding right key, and we're going to do the same thing for the left. My keyboard is going out. I need to buy a new keyboard. Come on, copy. Thank you. Jeez. <clears throat> All right, left arrow is pressed, and that is going to be... Uh, user is holding left input key. So that should be everything we need for our platform movement. Let's give it a test and see if it works. Yeah. Okay, so we got the very basics. As you see, he doesn't switch directions or anything yet. That's fine, we can add that later. All right, we're gonna add now an entirely new group of events. We're gonna call this Squish. This is how we're gonna squish our dude. Um, I'm actually gonna change his direction right here. So when you, when you uh, repeat while right arrow is pressed, we are going to change the direction of our dude to be to right, and then in left is plus pressed, we're gonna have him look left. <clears throat> Now, for that to take effect, he's going to need to have actual directions. Right now, he just has one direction. So we're going to copy this, drop it over here, flip his direction. And I need a walking animation. So for the walking animation, we're going to give it two frames. This is very important because this is how we're going to uh, show the game that we are having two states. It's going to have a squish state and an expanded state. He's also going to have a neutral state which we're going to give him when he's on the stopped animation. So make sure you give him two frames for the walking animation. We're going to need to set this as a loop and make it relatively slow, probably like 15. Do the same thing for the left. Loop it, set it to about 15. Okay. Uh, does he have two directions here? He does. Good. All right. <clears throat> um, okay, we're going to also change this animation while the arrows are pressed, so animation, change to walking, change to uh, walking, alright, that should be, that should be good. Uh, we also need to make sure his animation sets to be stopped, so we're going to ask uh, object state if he's standing on ground and as long as repeat while key is pressed all right as long as the left and right keys are not being held so we're going to negate these that will mean he is stopped so we are going to then set his animation to be stopped okay Let's take a look at that. Seems like it functions. Now to the squishing. We're gonna need to give these slimes some alterable values. We're gonna need to give them four alterable values, so pop in four of them. 
The first one we're going to call X scalar. The second we're going to call Y scalar. The third is going to be target X scalar. And the fourth is going to be target Y scalar. Um, set these all to one just in case. I don't know what we're going to do with the code yet. Uh, these, these are going to be how we transform. Uh, the, we're going to always set the X scale and the Y scale of our player to be X scalar and Y scalar. So let's do that now. Always <clears throat> uh, set X scale to be, we'll grab the value of, come on, go back there, X scalar. We will set the uh, quality to one being maximum quality. And we're always going to set the scale the Y scale to the value of Y scalar. Quality of one. So now we're gonna make sure that he always matches the value, the scale of these values, which initially are going to be X scalar and Y scalar. <clears throat> now we also want to always transform these values to, to become the target, just like we did in the smooth scrolling. So we're still on the always event, so we're always going to set the X scalar to, we're gonna grab the value of X scalar. We're going to add this to the, we need to grab the target, so target X, and we're subtracting that from X scalar. Okay, and then that whole thing we need to multiply by, um, hmm, probably 0.1 will do it. Let me, let me look at this, make sure it's right. Okay, choose value. Set X scalar to X scalar plus target X scale of slime minus X scalar. Yeah, that looks correct. All right, we need to do the exact same thing as well, but for the Y value. So we're gonna copy this event and we're just gonna change the, the values in the editor. So we're going to Y scalar and we're gonna change all instances of X to Y. I hope this makes sense. I'm kind of giving this a quick cursory Examination. All right, let's see. Y scalar, target Y scalar, minus Y scalar times 0 0.01. That should work. So now he should transform. Um, but we need to we need to activate that by switching the target X scalar and Y scalar. So how are we going to do that? Um, hmm, okay, we're going to do it this way. <clears throat> we're going to say if his animation is walking. And he only has two frames, remember. So we're gonna say if the animation frame is zero, <clears throat> and that's because the animations start from frame zero, even though in the animation editor, I think it starts at one. One is actually zero. Don't know why they do that. Actually, let us let me double check and make sure that's true. Um, no, they call it frame one. Yeah, they do, they call it frame, see, frame one. Frame one is frame zero, so keep that in mind in the event editor. So in the event editor, we're asking if it's frame zero. If it's frame zero, that would be, it. Uh, we'll make that the squish. So that's when he's going down. So if he's frame zero, we're going to change the alterable value of target X. We want him to squish, so X should expand. That's the, that's the horizontal. So we'll make it 1.4, and uh, we need to make him go down. So we're gonna, because like I said, he's squishing, so we're going to set uh, target Y scaler to be 0 0.8. Oh, that's 1.8. 0 0.8. No, God, I can't type. 0 0.8. Let me double check this again. Uh, target X scaler to 1.4 and target Y scaler to 0 0.8. Perfect. We're gonna copy this event and we're gonna we're gonna change it so that it, it when it's on frame one. And we are just going to switch these values. So we're gonna set the Y scaler to 0 0.8, making the <coughs> Y scale squished. And we are going to expand the X scale. Uh, X scale was squished, now Y scale is squished. I'm gonna expand the, the X scale, which I think was 1.4. Uh, target, no wait, that's the same. I did the same thing. Uh, okay, let me switch these values real quick. Whoops. Target X scale to 0 0.8, and we are going to set the Target Y scaler to 1.4. Is that backwards? Target X scaler 1.4. Target X scaler, there, okay. 
That should work. Um, now we also want to make sure that he is no longer squished at all. He returns to his normal state when we stop moving. And we know he has stopped moving when the animation is on stopped. So if the animation is stopped, we are going to set both of the target values to be 1. Meaning that the scale is, is, is uh, the default scale. <clears throat> because 1 is, is full size, anything less than 1 is less than full size. 2 is twice as big. So let's give it a test and see if we succeeded. All right, and he's bouncing around. It actually looks really cool, but that was not intentional. The reason he's bouncing around is because of where the hotspot is at. So if you like this effect where he bounces around, just leave it that way. He will, though, occasionally expand into the terrain. So we can fix that a couple ways. I'm not a big fan of that bounce. So what we're going to do is get rid of use fine detection so it uses a collision box. And um, I'm going to, to also change the hotspot to be at his feet. And we need to do that for every frame of the animations. So there's the walking, here's stopped. Whoops, I added another one. That was not what I wanted to do. All right, uh, yeah, hot spots there, okay. Now we need to do it over here. All right, let's give it a check now. Okay, and there we go. I like how he kind of shrinks a little bit. So there's our slime guy. There's the transformation. So I hope hope that made sense to you guys and wasn't too complicated. Essentially, we did it through the same formula we used for the smooth scrolling, which is your current X uh, set to your current X plus the target X minus the current X times 0 0.01 and do the same thing for Y. That is called a tween. It is very useful. Like I said, you can use it for a billion things. And this is just one more thing you can use it for. Uh, so if you guys like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to get back to you guys. Thanks a lot, and have a good day.